Hello again and welcome to day 13 of our Advent journey together. We've now crossed the halfway point. Christmas is less than two weeks away. Can you believe it? Seems like time's just been flying and I can only hope that's because we've been having fun. Now let's see what our Advent calendar has for us today. We're looking for the number 13. Yep, here it is right on the left hand side about the middle, right on that uh, window on the cottage on the left. And so let's see what our scripture is today. Uh, and here we see the angels from Luke chapter 2, verses 13 and 14. And suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly host with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Well, I think this is a particularly appropriate scripture for today. We talked about this briefly in church this morning, but for those of you who weren't with us, have you ever noticed in an Advent wreath, that three of the candles are violet, but one of them is rose-colored? I know you've seen it on the opening to this video series, but it's possible you may not have paid any attention. That rose-colored candle is to mark the third Sunday of Advent, which is the midpoint as Gaudet Sunday. Gaudet is the Latin word for rejoice. And for those who may be preparing their hearts during Advent through penitential acts and attitudes, this day they're encouraged to take a break from all that and just rejoice. And that's what we see the angels doing in this part of the Christmas story. Glory to God in the highest, they say, giving God praise and rejoicing that he has fulfilled his promise. The long-awaited Messiah has been born in Bethlehem, as they should, and as we should. So what would you give praise to God for this Christmas? This may be a harder question to answer than usual. There's so many things that we would typically rejoice over at Christmas that may not be possible this year. This year will be unique. But living through times in my life when I don't feel like rejoicing, it really isn't. There's always going to be times like that. It could be something serious such as the death of a loved one, an unresolved conflict, or maybe a health or financial burden. But it doesn't have to be. Sometimes I'm just tired or frustrated or in, it, or in a lousy mood, and I don't feel like rejoicing. But let's consider 1 Thessalonians 5.16. It's one of the shortest verses in the whole Bible. It's just two words. And those words are rejoice always. And then there's Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. And Paul wrote that last one while he was sitting in jail. In both of these verses, rejoice translates a Greek imperative. What that means is that for a Christian, rejoicing is not an option or a choice that we make when we feel like it. It's a command to be obeyed always. So how do I rejoice when I don't feel like it? Or when it seems like there's nothing worth rejoicing about? Well, we have to start by being intentional. We have to make up our mind and resolve to do it. Obeying commands is an act of the will, not a feeling. Second, we may have to look for something beyond our current circumstances. Certainly, we can always rejoice at our salvation. But it could also be something from our past, an answered prayer, an unexpected blessing or provision, something that reminds me who God is and what he's done for me. We can also look forward to the future, what it will be like when we are reunited with our departed loved one, or when all the cares of this world will be no more. Try it, and you might be surprised how your attitude will change. As it says in the words of the old hymn, Count Your Blessings, you might be familiar with that one, second verse goes like this, says, are you ever burdened with a load of care? Does the cross seem heavy you are called to bear? Count your many blessings, every doubt will fly, and you will be singing as the days go by. Now that's not to say that it's going to be easy, but it is possible. Hey, thanks for listening. God bless you, and Merry Christmas.